Hey guys, I'm going to be reviewing the Mold King McLaren 720S. This review is going to be broken down into three parts. The ordering and shipping, the building, and my design considerations when comparing this to the official LEGO Lamb uh, Porsche, Lamborghini, and uh, Bugatti. So the first place you can buy this from is AliExpress. It costs $136, including taxes when shipping it to Washington. Um, the person you're buying it from will most likely be um, taking out the uh, packets containing the Lego pieces and taking it from the original box that Mold King provides and putting it into a smaller unlabeled brown box to, sh to save up on shipping costs. From my experience, when they do this, it winds up uh, smelling a fair bit. The boxes they use uh, tend to have a very foul odor. As for me, I ordered my set from a website called uh, Taobao. Uh, for this, I paid $82, $83 for the car itself and uh, $74 for shipping. So I paid a total of $156. This is about uh, $30 more than what you would pay from AliExpress, but you do get the original box and its original package. Um, a few considerations when ordering from uh, Taobao. Everything is in Chinese. To set up an account, you will probably need a very good uh, translator, or you will need like someone who's fluent in Mandarin or Chinese next to you to translate the website. Another consideration is you will not know the shipping cost until the uh, package gets to the Taobao website, uh, Taobao Warehouse. They do have an estimated cost of $12, but I believe that is uh, per pound and not like for the package by itself. Um, another thing to note is it's not like as simple as you place your order and it comes to you. After it comes to you, place your order from the website first. Um, it'll come to the Taobao warehouse. Once it arrives there, you need to pay for um, forward shipping to the United States or to whichever country you're located in. So you will need to keep track as to when your package gets to that warehouse. And there's no way to estimate your shipping costs before time. Another thing to note is I have read stories wherein sometimes customs uh, rejects your package um, once it arrives in the US. So if that does happen, you may not have any recourse and you're effectively out of like $150. Um, Another thing to note is once it does arrive in the US, you need to dig through the website to try and find a tracking number. So it can be a little bit of a pain. And ordering it from Taobao took about a week more than ordering it directly from AliExpress. Um, let's move into packaging now. So here are two boxes. Uh, the, uh, the Mold King set, unlike Lego, on, uh, so the official Lego set comes in this very well reinforced box with like double thick uh, packaging to protect the box and it also has like spacers as well as the boxes uh, structurally sound because of uh, these boxes inside. They are very thick and they provide a lot of structural rigidity. My Mole King set however uh, came in a single uh, ply, like a single thick uh, cardboard box and it was very badly uh, damaged so i'm not sure if you guys can see it over here but the box was pretty mangled and that translated to the boxes inside as well um like i hope i'm able to catch that on camera but this box is really bent up which is a pity after you're paying um like nearly 80 dollars for shipping alone um Another thing to note is the Mold King's uh, box isn't as nice as the official Lego box. So the official Lego box is black all the way through, whereas the Mold King um, isn't black all the way through. Um, here's the design on the box and the Lamborghini, just look up an unboxing if you're unfamiliar with how um, the Lamborghini looks inside. Here's the uh, Mold King box. Um, it has a bit of a rainbow effect going on, which I like it reminds me of um, the overall design aesthetic reminds me of uh, lego boxes of days old with like a very flamboyant design up top with like the lego logo up here which is now a mold king lego um note that they also seem to advertise if you get the uh static version they will advertise the rc version on the side of the box um but other than that, like the box is pretty nice. It's a little bit beaten up. I think they could have done a better job of reinforcing the packaging. But overall, I'm pretty happy with it. 
Um, like, it looks very nice. Um, so that's my impressions on the uh, shipping and ordering experience. Let's move into the building experience. Now, something you may have noticed is there are only two boxes with the Mold King set, whereas an official LEGO set has seven boxes with, I think, um, seven, like, you open one box and it's only, like, pieces one. You, you open the second box, it's only pieces two. With the Mold King set, um, you will have numbered packets inside like labeled uh, one through nine and that's how they divvy it up so you'll have like one through four in here and um, five through nine in this box and unlike a official uh, lego box which has like i believe all the connectors you need in each box with the mole king set they have a unlabeled um, packet which has all of the technic joining pieces like the like the triple wide uh, connectors and and the black the black and blue connectors inside them um and it's not mentioned anywhere in the instructions i don't think um so you will need to keep an eye out for that um aside from that uh the packets uh seem to have the wrong pieces in them so uh for instance, I was on a particular step and I was required to get some rubber bands. They were in like, I was on packet two and the rubber bands were in like packet six or something. And that isn't referenced in the uh, manual at all. And this was for several steps in the construction where I had to sometimes jump between bags to get what I needed. So it seems like, honestly, it kind of like defeats the purpose of having numbered bags if you need to jump between the bags very often. Um, and yeah, another design note is, uh, which I had a particular issue with is, let me see if I have it actually one moment. I do have it. So the Mold King, um, you will have some steps where you're supposed to be installing the, uh, uh, this rare light as well as these hoses inside. Let me try and find a hose. Yeah. Like these hoses over here. The thing about these hoses and um, this accessory is they aren't pre-cut for you. So you will need to get a scissor and cut them to size, which is a little bit frustrating. On the note of instructions, uh, the Mold King set seems to be uh, missing some steps that official Lego steps do. So for instance, when you're assembling the engine in an official Lego set, they will have checks, you know, to make sure that the gearing works, uh, that the lever works and stuff like that. Whereas with the Mold King set, um, there are no such checks and if you're and if this is your first time building something like a lego or like a lepin you're gonna have a hard time like if you screw it up you would basically have to disassemble the whole car to get that right and i think if they included checks like over here that could fix a lot of those issues another thing is with the uh mold king set uh the colors aren't as vibrant oops the colors aren't as vibrant with the uh, lego set so i'm unsure if you guys can see this but the blues they use for uh, these connectors doesn't contrast a lot with the black. Whereas with official Lego, like the blue is a lot more bluer, like it's a lot more lighter. Um, another nitpicky annoyance with the uh, Mole King set is, let me see if I can find it. Uh, over here. So uh, I was assembling this and they asked me to connect... Uh, Basically, one moment, let me see if I can find it. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, they ask, so they ask you to connect. Uh... Oh, this is a bad example. Oh, yeah, over here. So they ask you to connect this uh, two by four with to, the, uh, to this part here, but they don't tell you where to connect it. So they could have used a different angle that would help solve this issue, but they haven't. And that made a uh, construction that much harder when it didn't have to be like, if they flipped this around, they could easily get around that. I think my last gripe with constructions is the uh, quality of the stickers. Uh, I hope this is picking it up well on camera, but the black they use isn't a deep black. So this is more like a, uh, it's not black. So when you put it on something that's black like the paneling over here, it it looks very bad. Like you can tell you've applied a sticker, whereas like with official Lego, this is like a pure black. Like the blacks, like the black here is like a pure black. Whereas with the Mold King set, this isn't a pure black. 
uh, like it just looks goofy, so I haven't applied them. And another thing is when you try and remove the stickers, you have to be very careful or you will uh, peel the paper up as well. Like, let me try and... Two. Doing this one-handed, my apologies. Okay, the sticker is working now, but there. Uh, I tried applying one or two stickers um, that were in were with the interior of the car, and it was peeling up the paper instead of the sticker. So you have to be very careful on that. The last complaint, actually, that I have with the design is the paneling. It has cuffs on it. And these are on several of the panels, including the black ones, like this cuff over here. Um, and with an all-white model, that's quite noticeable. Like, there's cuffs over here. Um, there's cuffs over there. Um, whereas with all of my Lego pieces, uh, sure, there have been discoloration issues with the uh, Lamborghini. But there haven't been cosmetic scratches like with the uh, Mold King set. That said, in all fairness, unless you're really looking for them, you'll be hard-pressed to find them. Like, if you step, like, two feet away from it, you will be hard-pressed to find them, like, really. Um, and another thing to note, actually, just one last design note, is because of licensing issues, because this isn't an officially licensed... Uh, actually, let me touch on this in the uh, design overview, but just to quickly say it, so... There are like hubcaps over here, and the steering wheel has a Porsche logo as well, as well as uh, there are like the official Lego sets like have stickers on uh, the seats as well. The Chiron sticker is over here. You don't get that with the uh, Mold King set, so it looks so you don't get hubcaps, you don't get steering stickers, uh, you don't get like a front sticker. It just looks a little bit like. If they had included, like, even a uh, random animal sticker, I think I'd be happy. Like, just to, like, make it look a little bit more consistent. With all that said, let's dive into, like, how does how did the build feel? So, as you can probably tell from a distance, the pieces look exactly the same as official LEGO. Like, the way they refract light, the way they reflect light, their texture... Um, they look and feel just like Lego. But what about assembly? So you'd be happy to know, actually, that uh, the pieces feel just as good as real Lego. In fact, if you were to uh, if you were to tie a blindfold on me and ask me to like put together those pieces, like without telling me whether they were Lego or an alternate brand, I'd be hard pressed to tell the difference. Like they were dead on. They felt just like Lego, like the way they snapped together, the tolerances between the pieces, like how tight they were to put together. It felt just like Lego. In fact, like when you snapped pieces together, they even made that satisfying click noise. Like, honestly, if you told me it wasn't Lego, minus the instructions, I probably wouldn't be able to tell unless I was looking for like that official Lego stamp that's on every piece. Um, that said, I did find the pieces a little bit firmer than Lego, but that's either a good thing or a bad thing, as in the sense that they were a little bit tighter to put together. I think that would also mean that taking it apart would be uh, slightly difficult, but you can read that both ways. Like, if you're planning on disassembling it for use elsewhere, that's a spot against it. But at the same time, like, if you're planning on actually playing with it, the fact that it's solidly put together is a massive perk. Um, so they look and feel the same. The only difference I found from a design standpoint was uh, with the beams. So official Lego, uh, what they do is they have small rounded uh, places for like axles to go through. Let me see if I have a axle actually. Uh, one moment, let me get an axle to show you what I mean. All right, so official Lego has these small little circular uh, grooves within the Lego piece itself, so that when you, uh, raise this, it's, uh, flat against the surface, like it's, uh, pretty, uh, you get the point, like it's flat against the surface, whereas in Mole King, that design is a little bit different, um, so it still achieves the same thing, 
but the uh, design isn't as refined as official Lego. But that said, if you're putting it together, uh, when you're putting it together, you really can't tell. The tolerances on these pieces, like the way they fit together, is really tight. Like, it's as tight as Lego. And like I said before, if you didn't know this was official Lego, you probably would have a very hard time telling it based on how the pieces fit together. Like, when you're connecting beams and you're connecting studs, they feel exactly the same. Um... Now, let's move on to design, which is honestly the biggest gripe I have with this. Uh, let me get the car nearer so I can point things out. One moment. I'm going to switch to uh, portrait here for a second. My apologies. But you can probably... I'm not sure if this is coming across well on camera, but the uh, McLaren feels a little bit weird when you look at it compared to the Porsche, Lamborghini, and Bugatti. Um... The reason why that is, is um, the Lego sets are all, I believe, 8.3, like they're 1 to about 8.15, um, whereas the McLaren set from Mold King is a 1 to 8.3 when it comes to uh, the width and length, but it's about a 1 to 9 ratio when it comes to height. So the car should have been a little bit taller. For it to be a true, uh, to be one by eight on all dimensions. Um, and you can probably tell that, uh, like, it just looks smaller compared to the uh, Porsche and the Lamborghini, despite them all being the uh, same size. Uh, just as it's a very minor uh, difference in terms of scale, but when you put them right next to each other, you can immediately tell that the McLaren is a little bit disproportionate to the other Lego sets. A couple of other things, uh, the interior is all black, um, and it really doesn't contrast that well, so it's very hard to see what's going on inside. Compare that to the Lego Porsche, which has large windows, which allow a lot of natural light in, as well as they have uh, a lot of, they have some contrast inside with the orange seats, or the Lamborghini, which also has small windows, but they don't use a black interior at all, or the Bugatti, which once again has small windows, but they don't have black interiors, which once again lets a lot of light inside. The McLaren has small windows, but uh, a, an old black interior. So it makes it very hard to see inside. It also doesn't help the fact that the uh, roof over here is very thick. Um, compare that to the Porsche, Lamborghini, and the Bugatti, which all seem to have about... Uh, two tick roofs, two tick, two tick, uh, like two studs tick. The McLaren has, I believe it looks like a uh, four stud tick roof. And that just once again limits how much you can see inside as well as like, yeah, it just looks, it's very hard to see what's going on inside. Um, another uh, design consideration, uh, pet peeve actually is, let me try and open this door. The seats, the seats are only uh, two blocks thick, and they have uh, like side guardrails essentially. With the uh, Porsche, it has uh, it does with the Porsche. Okay, it's four wide with the uh, added uh, like cage like seat padding to like make sure you don't slide around um it's similar it's a similar uh thing with the lamborghini it's four tick and it's similar with the uh bugatti as well it's four tick um so the seats are much narrower on the mold king set uh another design complaint actually is the gearing mechanism it doesn't look very nice um, like, you use this stick to change gears, and compared to what LEGO was doing around the time when this uh, build set was released, with, uh, you know, this gear over here, which looks much nicer in my opinion, or even with a set after with the Lamborghini, like, just a, sh just like a uh, lever that looks like that, just looks a little bit out of place in this car. 
I touched upon this before, but if you notice the inside rim, so this is Lego's first 1x8 scale car. Uh, you will notice that it has a hubcap as well as a brake. With the uh, Bugatti, they added a brake pad. Um, and with the Lamborghini, they added a brake pad. Um, they once again had a hubcap and a brake pad. The Mole King set doesn't have a hubcap or a brake cap or a brake caliper, I believe. Uh, yeah, brake, I believe this is a brake, whatever, like this rectangle here, the circle behind the rectangle, uh, both of those are missing, all three of those are missing with the Mole King set. Another uh, gripe is with the spoiler, actually. So the spoiler, if even if you're looking at it from a distance, you can see the mechanism to push the spoiler up. Uh, compare that to, yeah, if you angle it like that, that mechanism, like, just pops out like you can see it from a distance and that doesn't look very good if you compare to what the bugatti was doing yes that mechanism is still visible but because it is pushed that much inside it's very hard to see it if you look at it from a distance like if you look at it from here you cannot tell that mechanism actually is there whereas if you look at it if you look at the uh mole king set from the same angle you can tell that mechanism is over there, and it just looks a little bit unsightly. All that said, um, what do I like about this design? So, the biggest, all of that's actually livable, but I think the scale factor is probably my biggest issue with it. Like, it just looks disproportionate when you compare to the Porsche or the uh, Lamborghini. Like, it just looks disproportionately small because of the... Uh, Height not being quite up there. Um, as for what do I like, the engine compartment is viewable. So you can actually see the pistons uh, fire, which is really nice. You don't get that with, I think, any of the Lego sets aside from the aside from the Lamborghini. Um, that I believe Sharpel um, is the gentleman who designed this. When he designed this, he used a lot of studs um, to the point where this thing is built like a solid tank. Um, let me see if I can show you two. So one moment. All right. So if you can see inside that, there is, there are like over uh, eight studs reinforcing the, uh, the roof such that you can actually hold this car from here without fear of it breaking okay it broke a little bit over there but that's easily oh oh uh bad example but basically it feels very solid like he's the the frame itself feels very solid like the doors these doors feel solid like they aren't going anywhere compared to something like the official lego Porsche. Like, it just feels flimsy, even compared to something like the Bugatti. The Bugatti door just feels flimsy. Uh, I think it's probably down to the fact that how thin these are. Like, you only have... Uh, it just feels... It's really hard to describe, but, like, these doors don't feel like they're going anywhere. They feel very, very solid. Um, sorry, as I was... As I was opening, as I was trying to demonstrate how structurally sound a roof is, one of the roof components <laughs> fell down. Okay, I'll fix that later. Um, that said, another aspect that I really like about this design is just how accessible some of the components are. So, the Hand of God steering. That's really nice to have just available there. Um, whereas with the none of the official LEGO 1x8 sets have Hand of God steering. Another thing that I really like is the spoiler mechanism, unlike the Bugatti, is super accessible. Like, there's just a little nub over there that you turn, and the spoiler adjusts itself. That is super nice. Um, so yeah, I guess... Can, oh yeah, and the bonnet as well feels super solid. Um... These are things that I think LEGO could actually stand to learn from this um, alternate brand set. As for my final conclusions on this, honestly, it is a mixed bag. So the pieces feel solid. The overall design isn't too bad. Um, what I think ruins it, in my opinion, 
is uh, not ruins it. That's a very harsh word. But what would discourage me from recommending it is the very awkward scale. I would assume if this is your first one by eight scale set and you aren't going to be picking up any of the official Lego sets, this is probably fine in a vacuum. But if you're putting them close together with official Lego sets, you will notice the difference in scale. You'll notice the disproportionality almost immediately. Um, yeah, uh, honestly, you could also make the argument that, hey, I believe Mole King isn't licensing the set from Bruno or McLaren. So Bruno, dis um, despite Bruno, no, uh, the gentleman who designed this, I'll have a Charbel. So despite Charbel designing this, um, you know, he's not getting any royalties and this is an official Lego. You could have moral dilemma with that. But at the same time, if you're buying official Lego, that's like $1,200 worth in pieces. I picked up, you could pick up the set for like $140. That's nearly a tenth of the price. Um, honestly, yeah, it's it's a very hard spot to be in. And I think that is a decision you would have to make for yourself. Do you like the design enough to go for it? Or do you not? Uh, because if you're looking for something that feels like Lego, you cannot go wrong with this. This feels just like Lego when you're building it, and it looks just like Lego. So I guess that's a decision for yourself. Um, one thing to note is if you are missing any pieces with this, do not expect support like Lego. Uh, you will... I contacted the... Um, I made up a fake instance to just test uh, Mole King's customer support on AliExpress. They flat out refuse to help me for any missing pieces. Um, but yeah, if you don't have any missing pieces, this is a this is rel this was a relatively nice set to build. Um, but yeah, I think that's this video is long enough as is. I've been recording for about twenty six minutes. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments. I will be reading and replying to everything I see. Um, and if you have any other design questions, comments, or concerns, let me know. The next set I am planning on reviewing that is not the official Lego set is the uh, Kata uh, Ferrari that is licensed from Bruno, I believe. Um, Kata has in my in my uh, has had very good customer experience, or at least have had very good customer experience with them. So I'm probably going to be reviewing the ordering experience as well as the. Um, Similar things with like design, the fit and finish, because Kata and Mold King and Lepin are all three different brands when it comes to alternate Lego brand Technic. So, uh, yeah, let me know if you guys are interested in seeing that. And let me know if you guys have any questions, comments or concerns about this build. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you.